has been there or thereabouts throughout the entire weekend. When we oh, and that's Mansi's gone down. Mansi, who was. Round five then of the Moto2 World Championship and 31 riders lining up for the Grand Prix of France at the legendary Le Mans circuit. It's Moto2's rookie sensation, Raul Fernandez. When the lights go out, we are underway in the French Grand Prix and you can see immediately those on the right-hand side pull over to the dry part of the grid as they fire up through turn one. It's Marco Bezzecchi who leads them through. Eyes closed as we go through the chicane for the very first time because it's going to be treacherous in here today. Bezzecchi leading and uh, oh, you just want to see them all get through safely. Oh, there was a bit of barging in the middle of the field, but the front five seem to get through okay. Back the whole field are through okay as they go down to La Chapelle for the first time. Spots of rain on the camera, but it looks like we're going to be okay. Bezeki leading from Ralph Fernandez. Aaron Canet just being passed by Joe Roberts for third place. But Bezeki making the best start, Michael, up to Museum. Yeah, what a clean run for Bezeki through that first section. It all bunched up in the middle of the pack. Javi Vieira he had pulled a really clever move down the outside. And then, kind of as he came across that direction change, he really bunched up in, in amongst there was Remy Gardner. Not a great start for Sam Lowe's. He's gone back to 12th. His teammate. Augusto Fernandez, uh, meanwhile, has held on to his fifth place. In fact, he's up to fourth now past Joe Roberts. Garaz Ver can catch you out on lap one. And when it looks like it's going to be a dry race, as it is drying on track, but the majority of the circuit dry, this could be crucial time that Marco Bezzecchi's taken out. Oh, oh the pressure in there, Aaron Canet goes down into the Shimano Berth S. I was worried about the wetness on the track from the bridge over the top. It wasn't quite there, I don't think, for Canet. He limps away, but Canet crashes out of third. Yeah, the left side of that tyre still not fully up to temperature, not properly scrubbed in just yet. Crossing those wet patches under the bridge, and as he tipped in there, I think the rear just let go. I need to see it again, but unfortunate for Aaron Canet. He's had such good pace this weekend. Sam Lowe's is in behind Remy Gardner, behind the championship leader. One and two in the championship, ninth and tenth in this race. It's Bezeki who leads fresh from his first podium of 2021. There you can just see Gardner uh, go through. There he is, number 87 in ninth place, ahead of Sam Lowe's, heading up to this game for the second time. Sunshine now out at Le Mans. And this will be manna to uh, these boys because they, they really didn't want to have tricky conditions they had here one year ago and more rain still you can see damp areas around the track Michael it's good to see from that helicopter shot yeah you can see they're still having to cross those damp patches that's why it was quite important for Sam Lowe's to be cautious in that opening lap so yes he gave away a few positions he's actually still in his qualifying spot of 10th but at the moment he's got his championship rival or his main contender Remy Gardner the man who's three points ahead of him just there he's shadowing him right now so that's the safest option at this stage in the race the track will get better lap on lap if it were to stay like this, Ra Raul Fernandez would take over the championship lead. Marco Bezzecchi would be right in there too. Uh, they are, of course, third and fourth in the championship as things stand. There's Xavi Vierge, 97, as we zoom in on Sam Lowe's on the number 22. Look at the uh, the wet line across underneath that Parts Europe bridge over the top into the Shimano Berth S. And a couple of places around the track, the Dunlop Bridge in particular, where you can get a curtain of water uh, coming across the track. Yeah, unfortunately, where you, you have those bridges on the entry to the chicane at the Shimano Bufesses and also under the Dunlop Bridge, it takes a little bit longer. The sun doesn't get up those patches of, of tarmac and it takes such a long time for those to oh, dry. Oh, Augusto Fernandez was down for a moment, for a moment. I saw the Mark VDS bike. We were on board, actually, with Lowe's as he went through on Remy Gardner. So Lowe's up into eighth position now with Gardner dropping to ninth and his teammate Augusto Fernandez goes out at the Blue S's disaster for Augusto and the tracks come in Sam Lowe set a 39-1 on that lap so fastest man on track so the track these motor three motor two machines can't do consistent 37s 38s when the tracks fully up top work in order when you can use all the curbs and don't worry about those damp patches fastest rider in dry conditions this weekend Sam Lowe's from Raul Fernandez and in fact they were quite comfortably quicker from the likes of Augusto Fernandez and Remy Gardner so they're the two to keep an eye on here in the dry conditions although Marco Bezzecchi has been there or thereabouts throughout the entire weekend when we oh and that's Mansi's gone down Mansi who was fast in the warm-up second quickest in the wet conditions unfortunately the Pons rider is down at museum he was pushing early up to 11th place looked quite good on the bike and I was trying to make a move up the inside of Tony Arbolino, oh. has to squeeze too much front brake to avoid making contact with the rear, and down he goes. Tony's lucky there, isn't he? That could have been them both out of the race, but Arbolino lives to fight another day. Mansi is out of the French Grand Prix. So, 
Marco Bezzecchi leading, but he hasn't been able to churn out a lead as we thought he might early on in this race. Ralph Fernandez has kept good tabs on him with Joe Roberts closing behind. Hector Garzo's had a fantastic start, was eighth on the grid. They can see the number 40 bike uh, for the Pons team. This is where Lowe's made the move on Gardner on the previous lap, not this time on Xavi Vierge. Lowe's just being shadowed by Remy, so Remy will let Lowe's do the work through the field. He's got to make some moves here. Xavi Vierge is pushing hard at the moment, so Xavi will be trying to make that move on the MB Augusta of Aaron Balda very, very soon. If things stay the same, as they are for the end of this race. They're not going to, I'll tell you that now. Uh, <laughs> Ralph Fernandez would be leading the championship on 83 points from Bez, two behind with Gardner and Lowe's still within very close touching distance. But there's a long, long way to go in this French Grand Prix. 25 laps of this circuit, that's 65 miles. Alonso Lopez is another crasher, uh, only joined the party yesterday. Uh, as a replacement for Yari Montella, so not had too much time, probably had not had too much time in the dry, and Alonso, who's riding well actually in the European Moto2 Championship, now is out of the race. At the front, Bezeki from Fernandez, from Roberts. Roberts, the fastest rider on circuit at the moment, closing right in on the back of Ralph oh, Fernandez, and a sub lows down at Garage Vair, and it's with Xavi Vierge. Was that a move from one of them on the other? Who else has gone down? That's Baldessari in the gravel there. But that Costa, who again has been incredible today. Uh, they're one and two now in the Moto2 World Championship. He manages Jack Miller, who's just won the <laughs> Spanish Grand Prix in MotoGP. It's a good time to be part of the IO clan. Yeah, not bad. Aki is a shrewd operator, isn't he, in terms of how he picks his riders and, and how he manages that team. It always looks smart, well prepared, a lot of good staff in there and, and quality riders this season. And what about Raul Fernandez lining up to uh, take his second victory of the season here? They are talking about him in MotoGP and these kind of performances, when you're winning in your rookie year, you don't need to spend too long here, especially with his size. You know, your likes are your Juan Mears, your Maverick Vinales. They spent a year in this class and then said, look, I'm moving on. I don't need to spend too much longer in here. I've done my apprenticeship. Now, the interesting thing for me is we look at the battle further back. It's Fernandez is managed by Heinz Ginnigan. Yeah, that's a big Red Bull, Red Bull KTM man, former motocross champion. A yeah, good person to be managed by for Ralph Fernandez, obviously. Deep ties with KTM, a big link with Red Bull, and a yeah, bright future ahead for Ralph. Digi's back up to seventh, Michael. He's going to be attacked here by uh, Ayogura, perhaps. You don't want to get too much on the inside. Look at the water still standing there. But Digi has made an impressive comeback without the last the long lap penalties. He'd have been in the podium shout. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Digi's got a bit of work to do to get on to that Marcel Schroeder's rear wheel. But he wasn't getting it easy there. Ayogura was fighting hard. Isa definitely a little samurai a scrapper isn't he doesn't give in easy and uh yeah fighting hard there but had to think the better of it as he went over those damp patches into the shimano blue fest last lap time for raul fernandez is he on course to take his second victory in moto 2 in just his fifth race seriously impressive stuff as he heads up to museum corner when he comes out of here there'll be just seven corners for him to go of this 2.6 mile bugatti layout at Le Mans. This is one of the most tricky parts now. We've seen his front tyre protesting throughout into Garage Vert. And it looks like he was safely through on this occasion. No last lap heroics from Remy Gardner, but a brilliant ride from him from seventh on the grid to take a fourth podium of the year. His third, second place, still to take victory, but he'll be leading the World Championship when we leave Le Mans to head to Mugello and Barcelona. Back-to-back -back races next on the calendar. There's Raul's little brother Adrian who's had a decent ride in Moto3 earlier on today as Raul comes through the blue S's through the left hand part and just the double apex right of the recordable to go. The gap has closed but not by enough for Remy Gardner. Here comes Raul Fernandez through the double apex right hander. He has time to look behind him to see his teammate Remy Gardner and the beautiful stand up wheelie from Raul Fernandez who wins with his teammate Remy Garner in second. Marco Bezzecchi takes third. Tony Arbolino, best result of his rookie career in Moto2. He's in fourth place. 